Hi, I'm from CleanStick, and I'm here to show you the proper procedures for using this dishwashing machine. This machine is what we call a flight machine. It has multiple tanks with this where the dishes and silverware travel through the machine and, in, and are cleaned in separate stages. The first stage is the pre-wash. The gross food soil is scrapped off the plates and gone into the pre-wash tank and into the scrap baskets. The second one is the wash tank where we put the soap in and where this, most of the cleaning takes place. Then we go into a rinsing tank and then of course the final rinse for 180 degrees sanitizing purposes. That brings us to the temperature gauges. The temperature gauges on the machine is an indicator for you to see if the machine is operating correctly and if not, to speak to your supervisor immediately. The pre-wash temperature should be approximately 120 to 130 degrees, not so hot as to bake the food on the plates. The wash temperature, we're looking at a minimum of 150 degrees to 160. And by the way, it is indicated right on the gauge itself the correct temperature. The rinse goes up to about 160, 180 to start the preheating process so that everything will eventually dry coming out of the machine. And then the final rinse is your 180 degree sanitizing temperature. This is where the sanitizing takes place in the machine and that's where it's very important if you don't see the correct temperature to report it to your supervisor immediately. Let's now talk about the proper chemicals for the proper job. First of all, the chemical that's used on the dishwashing machine, as we've done before, is the action caps. It has a lid on it. You pull the lid off. There's a screen on the top over here that prevents the chemical from coming out without being sprayed. It goes into the container upside down. It's in an automatic dispenser. It's computer operated. The second chemical we're talking about is Cleanse Dip. It's our pre-soaking solution. It's used exclusively for silverware pre-soaking before it goes in the machine. It's a low foaming chemical and it dissolves the food soil that gets on the tongues of the fork. Kitchen cleanse. General purpose cleanup, any place in the kitchen, walls, floor, countertops. We have automatic dispensers for it in, in the other side of the room and everything works automatically at the proper ratios. Cleanse Q is a quaternary sanitizer cleaner combination. It cleans and at the same time it kills my bacteria and sanitizes. The bone dry is the chemical that's used as the rinse agent on the dishwasher machine. It will cause the water droplets to flatten and sheet and roll right off the, the plates and silverware. Solid gold is our solid pot and pan soap. It's like yellow cement in a jar. It does not come out. It goes into the automatic dispenser and gets dispensed at the correct ratio. It is an extremely economical product to use. One of the first things you want to do before you even start using a machine is to make sure the proper chemicals are in place. In this case, the detergent is empty and we would be washing with no soap at all. So let's discard this and let's put on a fresh one. There is a top on top of the jar. Very gently, you remove the top. We have the screen on top that keeps the soap from falling out. Invert the jar into the dispenser, seal it in place, and then you're ready to go. Same thing with the rinsing fluid. The rinsing fluid, called bone dry, in this case is empty. While we have sanitizing taking place, there'll be nothing drying. So we put a fresh container of bone dry onto the machine and remove the empty one. Now the machine is ready to be turned on and begin the washing process. What we want to talk about now is the proper cleaning of the machine. The wash arms of the machine, the scrap baskets of the machine all have to come out. We've taken the liberty of opening the doors up, letting the machine cool off, and now what we'll do is pull out the wash arms for cleaning purposes. They lift up and gently pull out Tip it back in case there's any water left in the arm. And you can see from here that there is food soil that is blocking the cleaning jets in the arm. This will not permit any cleaning and this will has to be cleaned. Shake a little bit of it out. And as you can see from here, we got a lot of it that came out of the arm. And hose out the arm completely. Washing it completely thoroughly through the arm. We're gonna do this for the lower arm 
And we're also going to do it for the upper arm. Again, you're going to find food soil that blocks the openings in the arm. What you also want to do is you want to take a pot brush and you want to scrub the arm a little bit and clean off the food and the soil that's on the outside of the arms. You'd have a lot of problem with joint commission on this. This has to be cleaned, this has to be scrubbed off and soaked clean. At the same time, we're going to pull out the scrap baskets. Remove them from the machine, emptying any food that's in them out of the basket. This gets emptied into the garbage. We have a gross amount of food soil in the bottom of the tank and we want to flush that out. At the same time, we'll wash the upper part of the machine. And this area in the very front of the machine has to be scrubbed. Take our pot brush and we scrub this out here. This is done for the entire portion of the machine. Now that we've completely cleaned our scrap baskets, it's time to put the machine back together. The basket gets slid back into place. The small basket gets placed in front of it. And now we're going to put our wash arms back together. Lower wash arm with the jets facing up, perfectly clean. Slide that back into place and lock it with the upper arm. Our upper arm has been cleaned. It's locked into place. There releases the lock. That locks it. Now that we've cleaned out all four tanks of the machine, it's time to close the doors and fill it up. The doors have safety catches, which you're going to push out of the way and pull the door down. The safety catches prevent you from losing a finger as the door slams down. See the catch here? And the catch down there. Now it's time to close the drain. Closed position. That's open. That's closed. At this point, it's time to turn the machine on and let the automatic fill take over. This will keep on running until the machine is fully filled. It will then stop automatically. Here we have a situation where the conveyor on the dish machine has stopped. The motors are still running, but the conveyor has jammed. Now we've gone through all the other doors. This is my last door to open up. And let's see if we can find out what's jamming the conveyor. Okay, we have a rack here with an item in the rack that has fallen through the rack and gone down to the bottom. You want to get a close-up of this, you can see it's jamming both sides. I managed to get this out. Luckily it did not bend, otherwise we have the conveyor totally crushed. And you can see what has happened is the points have gone right through the opening. We want to be very careful about that with large objects in the machine. This is normally washed at the pot and pan sink and not at a dishwashing machine.